Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video today what I want to do is give you a quick look at the newly released Luminar 4 and to do this what I want to do is I want to focus on how to edit an image in Luminar 4 and I'm going to particularly showcase the AI tools because one of the advantages of Luminar 4 is that you can actually edit an image and make a lot of changes really quickly by just using the AI tools within the software. So with that in mind, I have a photo here of the iconic Cape Inn Bridge in Dublin. So for those who've never been to Dublin, this is one of the key landmarks in the city. It's a footbridge that crosses the River Liffey and it is probably one of the most famous sites in the city. So this is just, it's kind of a boring shot of the bridge. So let's see what we can do with it. So um, this is a raw file that I have opened here in Luminar and the first thing I want to do is turn on lens correction so if we look at the new interface um, down the right hand side here we have a bunch of tools uh, tool tabs and so the first one here is layers and then the second one here is canvas so canvas is where you will find things like crop and rotate erase and the clone and stamp tools but it's also where you'll find lens and geometry and in here you will find the options for fixing lens distortions so this will just compensate for the lens so it reads the lens metadata and much like Lightroom or Capture One or any kind of other modern software that reads the lens metadata and applies a correction based on that now I can also do chromatic aberrations here as well and while I'm in here I'm just going to rotate this slightly because it's a bit off so I'll hit the crop and rotate tool and I'm just going to rotate this. So what I'm looking for here is I'm just going to make it so that the verticals in the image are vertical. And I might just crop in a bit here as well. Okay. So that's kind of the first thing we want to do. So the next thing we want to do is go to the essentials tab and you'll actually find most of what you need here in the essentials tab. So the first tool we have here is called light. And this is basically your, your normal edits that you normally make and what it would be considered the basic edits in most software. So in Luminar 4, they've decided to call this light. In the previous version, it was develop. So you have things like exposure, if you want to adjust your white balance and all that, you've got those, all those things here as well. Um, one of the new features is called smart contrast. So what smart contrast does is adjust the contrast without actually affecting the color. So sometimes when you adjust contrast in an image uh, using traditional tools, it will increase the saturation slightly in different parts of the image as well. So um, with smart contrast, what they've done is they've, they've basically made it so it doesn't really affect the overall levels of saturation. At least that's, what's, uh, that's what they say in the instructions. I've noticed that if you tweak it here, you can see the yellow is changing slightly. But anyway, we're not going to use that now. What I want to do is use the AI tools. So I'm going to start with AI Enhance and we have Accent AI. So I'm just going to drag this up and you can see straight away that makes the image look much better. Um, and what it's doing is it's kind of adjusting all the different levels throughout the image. So you've got it's bringing up the shadows, it's kind of bringing down the highlights and it's doing that in a smart way. And uh, it probably would take several different sliders to get this. And the, with this you just got one slider. Um, and then the second thing we have is AI Enhancer, AI Sky Enhancer, sorry. And if I drag this up, you can see it darkens down the sky and it does also puts a nice gradient on it. So it actually looks kind of natural. So then the next thing we could do is we can use AI Structure. And AI Structure is like kind of like clarity, only it applies it in a smart way. So if I drag this up, you can see it's increasing the detail in the image, but it's also it's applying it uh, in different areas at different strengths. And this is one of the key features of Luminar 4 that they had advertised. And you will notice that when it does this, it um, you don't get halos like you get with some other um, software when you just things like clarity in it. So if, for example, if I zoom in here, uh, you see there's no kind of halos around um, sharp edges and stuff like that. So if I compare to the original image, so there's before and there's after. You can see that 
we've made the image look much more dynamic and all that was with just a couple of sliders. In fact, three sliders. One, two, three. But of course we can take this further and let me see, I might just add a little bit of a vignette in just to kind of focus the attention in for a bit. And then the sky itself is kind of a bit boring. So we can use one of the other new features and that is AI sky replacement. So you'll find it in the creative tab. And at the top of the creative tab, you'll see AI sky replacement. So basically all you need to do is select an image from the list or you can load your own image. So if there's no sky in the image, this would be grayed out and you won't be able to do anything, but because there is, I can just pick one and so I'll pick the last one here in the list. And it takes a couple of seconds. And there you can see it's replaced it with a much more dramatic looking sky. And it's actually altered the colors of the scene a bit as well. And it has made it a little bit darker, but you can adjust how much it's going to relight the scene with the slider here. And that's obviously too dark. So we'll bring that back. And that is quite a difference. So I can turn this off and turn this back on again. And if we look in here, if we zoom in to one to one, we can see that's done a pretty impressive job on the mask. Uh, even through the areas of the trees here, it's replaced it. So you can actually tweak this quite a lot if you want. So if on most of the tools in Lumera 4, you have advanced settings, and this allows you to do things like close gaps will let you tweak the masks. Uh, sky local will adjust the blend between the two. Um, but because the sky was fairly plain here on the one I had, it's not going to do much. You can also blend the horizon and you can see this button here for flip sky. So if we wanted to, we could flip the sky around. But I think the other way works better. I think that's more dramatic. It kind of fits the overall shape of the image a bit better. So again, if we just to toggle this before and then after. The only downside to the sky replacement in this is that it doesn't um, affect reflection. So you can see here, it's not actually changed anything in the sea, or sorry, in the water of the river here. Um, but because the water is fairly choppy and the colors here kind of match the colors in this scene, we can get away with that. Um, there is a way to manually add um, re to reflections in this without having to go to something like Photoshop and that is you can use a texture layer or you can use, um, we can go to the layers panel. So up here in the layers, we can go add new image layer. Um, and I don't have the sky, so I'm not going to do that at the minute, but that's how you do it. Then you can um, move it and then just mask it into the image and just kind of blend it down. Maybe in a future version, they will be able to detect reflections as well. Even so, to, to actually have done this normally through Photoshop would be be quite an effort to mask out all the trees and everything. So the technology behind it is quite impressive. Um, so yeah, so some of the other things in Luminar 4, particularly if you've come from one of the previous versions, is they've moved a lot of stuff around. So And some stuff has been renamed and combined. So if we go down here now, we see Details Enhancer. So this is what was Details Enhancer before, but we also have sharpening in here as well. So uh, for example, let me just zoom in a bit here. Um, this image actually could use a bit of sharpening. So again, we just have a single slider for sharpening, but if I go to advanced settings here, you can see we have more, det more details as to what we can do. So and down here in the sharpening radius, we can actually turn that down a bit and we can turn them, well, the mask is probably fine. And then we can adjust details. So if you're used to Lightroom medium details in the details enhancer will be similar to the texture um, tool in Lightroom. So we don't want to push this too far. So, so we'll bring that back out. Now, the one thing I will say is since we added the sky, it's got a bit dark. So I'm going to go back up here to my light tab. And I'm just going to adjust the overall exposure just a bit. Maybe we'll try some of the smart contrast.
one of the things I found in Luminar 4 as well is the more you do to an image, it does slow down a bit. But what happens is it drops the resolution as you are making adjustments. So it kind of compensates. So it stays reasonably real time, um, but it can slow down a bit. And um, bear in mind, I am using an old computer and I am recording the screen at the same time. So, so some of the other tools, um, Landscape Enhancer now contains Dehaze, Golden Hour and Foliage Enhancer. These were all separate filters in the previous version. So we could, for example, add, use golden hour here. And if I go to advanced settings, it doesn't actually give you any of the settings that were in golden hour, which is a bit of a pain because I find that it's generally too saturated. So I'm gonna turn this back down a bit. And then you have dehaze as well, uh, which again, is not really useful on this image. There is also lots of um, tools for portraits, but obviously this isn't a portrait image, so I can't use any of those. And then in professional, we have some more advanced settings. So I have advanced contrast. So this allows you to adjust contrast on different um, parts of the image. So we can adjust the contrast separately for highlights, midtones, and, and shadows. In this case, I'm just going to adjust the high midtones contrast slightly, and I don't need to adjust the shadows. Okay, an adjustable gradient. Um, this allows you to basically adjust the brightness and contrast of different parts of the image. So we have the top and bottom. So it's like using a gradient filter. Um, and then Dodge and Burn is basic color enhancer. Um, this combines, again, some different tools that were in the previous version. Um, photo filter, again, it's fairly obvious. And then split toning is the same as the previous one. So yeah, so a few things have moved around if you've come from Luminar 3. Um, but if not, you can see how quickly you can make um, your image adjustments without having to do any kind of complex masking or anything like that. And you can get a fairly good image fairly quickly. So, so I'm actually going to turn that off because that's ruining the image. So that is pretty much it. That's how you edit an image from start to finish in Luminar using mostly the AI tools. And the beauty of this is you can actually then apply those settings to a whole bunch of images. And because they're AI based, because they analyze each image, they will kind of apply in an appropriate fashion for each of the images that you're batching it to. So it's kind of useful in that respect as well. Um, Luminar 4 is it's quite a big change from Luminar 3. Um, in the edit side of things, but they didn't actually change any of the library side of things, at least no significant changes to it. And I know that's kind of been a bone of contention with some people, but for me, mostly I just use it as a plugin or I use it as a single image editor. I don't really use the library side of things that much, but if you have used the library side of things and you were kind of hoping for a big upgrade, unfortunately, it's not really in this version. Um, but yeah, so the AI tools, some of the AI tools I think are quite useful. Um, there's been a lot of discussion too as to whether um, you know the downsides of using AI and it's just going to do everything for you. But to me, the way I look at it is, they allow you to do things much quicker than you would normally be able to do it. Um, particularly with things like sky replacement, there is the potential for them to be overused. But at the same time, the way to look at it is it's just another tool. So see it from that point of view. Anyway, this has just been a quick overview and I'm kind of rambling now, so I've gone off on several tangents at this point and I'm sure I'll get lots of positive comments in the comment section about my journey down different tangents here. So anyway, <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you do, please um, like, share, subscribe and comment and also check out my Patreon page if you like videos like this and you want to help me keep making more. Um, I've recently relaunched my Patreon page and I've added a whole bunch of new tiers and new benefits and so check that out link will be in the description below so thanks for watching and uh, see you next time